so uh, Darby Allen enrages me. Darby <laughs> Allen makes a fire burn within my fucking bowels at the ignorance of him. <laughs> and I, I'm almost moved to travel and leave and go out in public and leave my home and travel somewhere just to tell him what a stupid idiot I think he is. <laughs> But I'd probably end up getting COVID on the way. <laughs> so. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross. Back at it again with another video. So we're going to check out Jim Cornette review Sting's retirement match with Darby Allin versus Young Bucks at AEW Revolution 2024. Now, y'all know I had to check this one out. I definitely wanted to see what Jim had to say about this match. Specifically about what Darby Allin essentially tried to do to himself in this match by trying to end his life legitimately with that one crazy ass spot i really want to see what he had to say me personally i enjoyed the match uh it, it was nonsensical overbook non nonsense but it was sting's last match and it was fun the crowd enjoyed it i know i enjoyed it even though a lot of what was happening made no sense it was still definitely fun uh, just to see Sting one more time in the ring, man. And uh, the right outcome, uh, in my opinion, was correct in Sting and Darby winning. But definitely wanted to see what Jim Cornette has to say. It's a long video, 27 minutes. So we're going to sit back, relax, and get right into this one. Appreciate all love support. See what Jim Cornette has to say about this. They got bigger problems over in the tag team division, Brian. Because there's big things on the horizon after this main event match of the pay-per-view, Sting's retirement. That's why they sold the tickets. Mm -hmm. That's why the crowd was there. That mm -hmm. was the interest of the pay-per-view. The rest of this stuff has just been bad in time. As I said a little while ago, they had one job. Yeah. One job. Just give Sting a nice send-off, right? <laughs> well, we shall see. <laughs> the opening legend to enter was Ric Flair yep. in Greensboro at the Coliseum. And down the aisle he comes and he gets a nice ovation. I'm sure you heard it. Very, very nice. And then the second one to come out is Ricky Steamboat, and he got a bigger pop than Flair. Mm -hmm. Do you? Th is it just that? No one's sick of him. Well, yeah. I was about to say, they've seen Flair so much on TV, even if it wasn't live, whereas Steamboat has the goddamn good common sense that God gave a goose, as Mama Cornette used to say, to stay <laughs> out of sight most of the time and yeah. rest on his laurels as a retired legend. Yeah. Steamboat never embarrasses you if you're a fan of his. No. Mm -mm. And, <sighs> and you don't hear much about Steamboat. He'd be chilling, bro. He did his time in the business. And he chills. You don't really see too much of him. So that is a nice uh, uh, observation. He did get a much bigger pop because you don't see him much. He'd just be chilling, man. So, I, Of all the people involved in this, he's the only one that I felt bad and embarrassed for because <laughs> the other ones brought it on themselves. But <laughs> I can't imagine what he's thinking when he sees this and it just – Shaking his head. Anyway, <laughs> Nikita Koloff, Magnum TA, and Scotty Riggs were in the front row. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> um, they couldn't even introduce them, and you know, it just they were in the front row looking on. Reportedly, WWE turned down Kevin Nash's request, or at least when he asked if he could go, they said they would prefer if he didn't because he's under a Legends deal, and Sting wanted him to be there. Mm. Well, yeah, but would he have then been in the front row? Would they do the parade wave for a brief on camera, or what the fuck? Nikita Koloff next and to Scotty Magnum Riggs, yeah. Well, but, but Nikita and uh, Scotty Riggs should have been in the front row. I mean, you know, all do love and respect Scotty Riggs, but what does he have to do with this? Magnum and Nikita were two of not only the biggest stars to ever wrestle in the Greensboro Coliseum, but Nikita and Sting had. Uh, some interaction and anyway there anyway they spent plenty of time on the buckaroos entrance here come the lollipop guild they had <laughs> glorious music they were wearing satin robes their hair was dyed black 
They looked oh like two God. children cosplaying as Gomez Adams. And they had cannons to shoot off their business cards. <laughs> <sighs> so the robes were reminiscent of, you know, in the days when when uh, Rocky was a hot movie, you know, you might see some kids wearing these robes or whatever, but now they, they fancy themselves boxers, or was this just to get heat for looking as like as big a douchebags as possible? They've already got that trademark. Yeah. <laughs> so then, oh man, here came Darby. Yep. And he gets his entrance and his introduction, mm -hmm. and then blackout. And piano music starts playing, and it wasn't Billy Joel. The longer it went, the more I believe that somebody's friend or cousin is taking piano lessons in the company. It wasn't what me. What the fuck was that? It wasn't me. No, your shit sounds better. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> so thank so you. then they went to the dramatic video where Sting <laughs> is in a theater, and he's watching on the screen, and they open the... You could tell Darby had to shoot this because, yeah, there, there's a germ of things there, but, you know, the curtain opens and he looks at all the his career on the screen. They had pictures of him when he was in WCW because they don't own the footage. And then some highlights of him in Japan and uh, stuff that he's done recently. And I was, I just made the note this looks so amateur hour for something of this magnitude or alleged Damn. magnitude. And the WWE would have made magic here with some. Here's the thing. I enjoyed that. I did, but I, this is something that's been, I guess you could say the issue with AEW for a while is their promo packages. You can tell the level of creativity and, and how they're done in WWE, obviously a bigger company, in the sense of when they do promo packages, they go in with the promo packages. And AEW, they're more kind of simplistic with their promo packages. But nevertheless, me personally, I enjoyed this for what it was. So, some kind of production, right? But this is, uh, you know, one of the guys that went to film school shooting it on his off day. What the? I didn't think this was that bad. I yeah. thought this was all right. Yeah, this was oh, cool. it, it, I mean, it was better than what you normally see on AEW television, but for something that they need, if they're going to have a national television show, they need real fucking production. Again, can you imagine what this would have looked like on Fox on SmackDown or on oh, any yeah. of their premium live events? They would have... They would have sent a crew and a few trucks and they would have shot for a few days and they mm -hmm. would have come up with something that they could have nominated for an Emmy. Yeah. And Sting says, it's showtime for the last time. Let's do this. And they go back to the arena. And they play the music again. But now it's, it's seek and destroy, right? Mm -hmm. And out comes... Sting dressed as Surfer Sting with the red, white, and blue, the Great American Bash 90 type of look, the blonde hair. And <laughs> there was a germ of something here, but they fucked it up. <laughs> because it's Sting's sons dressed up as him, mm -hmm. Surfer Sting, and then Crow Sting at two mm -hmm. different phases of his career. When he came out, it looked like, because they had the long shot, it could have been Sting. It could have been Sting dressed up in his old, and the people popped, right? Mm -hmm. But then they go to a close-up with one of the handheld cameras, and you can tell it's not Sting. Mm -hmm. And then the crow Sting walks in. Well, now you know that the other one ain't Sting, and so that one probably ain't either. They, they botched their opportunity. If they'd have kept the long shot, then people would have thought that Sting, when crow Sting walked out, the whole shit. Are they doing a split screen? And then when real Sting walks in between them, then they would have gotten that visual pop of the people couldn't tell that it were fake Stings. Obviously, one of them had to be, but mm -hmm. then they could have said, oh, it's Sting's sons. But instead, they took a close-up of the first fucking guy out, and you could tell he had a fat face. <laughs> they had the opportunity to do a little production sleight of hand, and they dropped the ball on it. Am I being too criti critical here? I mean, you're being critical. Yeah, was yeah. it perfect? Probably not, but it was a nice thing. And yeah, 
you know, I will say I started laughing maybe for the wrong reasons when this was going on, because again, it's a nice tribute, but where else would, where, <laughs> where else would someone retire and their children in their thirties would show up dressed like they used to dress <laughs> and That's then just stupid. start doing their moves. I mean, it, it's ridiculous on its face. Well, we ain't got there yet. And you, and you told me before, and you watched it before I did. You said you enjoyed the ridiculousness of the spectacle that it mm -hmm. was, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, let's get same here. Like uh, I enjoyed that part, like just seeing his sons out there. That was pretty cool. But once again, this match is ridiculous. It makes absolutely no sense. But you enjoy it. This is one of those wrestling matches where you just like this is fun. I, I can't even be hypercritical because, once again, it's Sting's last match. I would have been disappointed if this wasn't fun. This was just boring. Oh, yeah, I would have definitely been disappointed, but this was fun, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> Get there, then. It's, by the way, Sting's AEW record 28-0. and 0. He never put anybody over. <laughs> selfish Sting. He... Old selfish Sting. Oh, but no, he was never asked. I know, I know, I know. But, goddamn, that's the thing. <laughs> Of course, he shouldn't lose his retirement match. Yeah. But all that money you've invested, they could, they never set one guy up mm -mm. to get the a young guy on the way up yeah. to get the rub of beating Stam Jeff when he was a heel. Yeah. Nothing. Nobody beat him. Anyway. No, in fact, there was a promo once where Sting kind of punked out MJF. And uh -huh. I said, like, oh, wow, they made you something with these two. And then they never did anything with those two. But I guess Tony, when he started AEW, was just obsessed with the idea of getting a WCW legend yep. and giving them a long, undefeated streak. Tony's uh, affection and uh, affinity for Nitro and all things late 90s WCW, which is why the, the, the biggest example of rotten booking ever, late 90s WCW, that led to the <laughs> fucking crash of the most well-funded wrestling company to that point in time of all time is what he wants to emulate so he's doing good there <laughs> so at the bell to ring to start the match darby hit a dive on both of the buckaroos on the floor yeah and then stinger started hitting stinger splashes and then his sons jumped in the ring <laughs> and they did stinger stumbles <laughs> they did back and forth they were doing stinger splashes to the fucking little buckaroos in the corner and just constantly and by the way this is a tornado match with no yeah. rules and no disqualification yep. and no count out yep. and a lazy booking <laughs> i was waiting for and it <laughs> you, oh, you got a 65 year old legend that you're trying to uh, give a great match to on the way out so there's always going to be smoke and mirrors but the the smoke is not usually from shit really on fire and the mirrors usually don't have real glass in them that people are thrown oh, through oh boy uh Sting got the scorpion on both bucks at the same time and then beat both of them up on the floor with chairs while his sons were setting up tables and Darby was putting a 12-foot ladder up at least 12 feet, maybe 15. <laughs> and then everything came to a complete halt while Sting and one of his sons and some, they all started pulling out panes of glass from mm -hmm. under the ring. Mm -hmm. And it, it, then suddenly it looked like it, it was a goddamn window replacement job where everybody's <laughs> carefully ca carrying panes of glass to different places to set them up where they're supposed to be while nothing else is fucking happening. And they've got one pane of glass leaned up against the ring and they've got on the other side of the ring three chairs lined up on one side and three chairs lined up on the other side and they put the painted glass in the middle of that and you knew what was about to happen and then sting's got his baseball bat and they do a spot where he swings at one of the buckaroos and he moves and sting hits the metal stairs real hard for the sound right mm-hmm but then he turns around and the other one's behind him and he swings at the other buckaroo and that one ducks and he hits the glass with the bat, but it doesn't break. So he draws back, and just hits it again Man, and breaks, breaks it on again. purpose. Yep. <laughs> and I'm what the, <laughs> we'll talk about the glass and uh, oh uh, my God. <laughs> see if we can figure out what the fuck with it here in a few minutes. But at that point, 
they walk fighted mm -hmm. or walk fought <laughs> all through the arena to go back to the stage so that all four of them were on the stage. And Nikki suplex Darby off the stage through two tables set up with black cloth over the top of them. And, but then Maddie, Maddie suplex Sting off the stage on the other side through two tables covered up in black cloth. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then Darby and the buckaroos go back to the ring and they buckle bomb Darby on a ladder in the corner. But moments later, he's up making a comeback, beating up both of them. And I wrote, this is a complete fucking farce of this. This is a parody. So then... <laughs> Darby set up the ladder. Oh my God. Here we go. And in the middle of the ring and went to almost the top of it. And oh just my God. Here we go, as Nikki for no apparent reason is just staggering in front of the chairs with the panes of, or the pane of glass. Darby yeah. does a cannonball off the top and the other dipshit brother pulls one brother out of the way. And Darby goes back first oh off a 15 God. foot ladder in a ring Oh through the glass, uh, through, through the, the chairs, chairs, and to the concrete floor. Oh, my God, bro. And everything explodes everywhere. <laughs> and they also, at some point, there was another pane of... Yeah, they throw him and through glass later on. Sting, that was leaned up in the ring in the corner, so when he went ass first through it, it shot glass everywhere in the crowd. <laughs> now, it, here's two things. Was it real glass or was it fake glass? Well, I'm I, I to be honest, I don't know because these people are stupid enough to use the real shit, <laughs> but it cut Darby Allen's back open everywhere. He yeah. was punctured and sliced and whatever the fuck. But yeah. besides that, I I legit think on on at least for that glass pane, I do think they use real glass, bro, because he was cut up like. There was no, he had no time to blade. As soon as he hit it, they cut away and they cut back and you just see blood, just spots, just blood everywhere, bro. Like they had to, at the end, you know, you can see they obviously cut away from him, but when he gets back into the match, he has all these back, black little bandages to kind of hold the blooding, but like the, the not the blooding, the bleeding. So I do think. On that particular spike, they may have used real glass because he was, he was cut the fuck up. I don't know. It blew into a million pieces. So whether it was fake glass or real glass, if you get that in your eye, if yeah. the crowd, if somebody opened their mouth at the right time and went down their fucking throat, or some kid, it lands in their drink, and they drink, and, oh, I'm choking, Mommy. I might have, The carotid is sliced from the inside out. Yeah. What the fuck? And whether it was fake glass or not, it was a real bump off a 15-foot yeah. ladder threw shit onto chairs on the concrete. Yeah. Holy shit. And, <laughs> and here's why I'm finished with Darby Allen. <laughs> because <we> unlike <laughs> most of these guys... <laughs> That AEW has jerked off the indies. He's got some talent and some charisma. He has an appeal. Mm -hmm. And as we've mentioned before, years ago, before, you know, we found that it wasn't going to take place. If you produced him and you brought him along, he could be a dynamic underdog baby face yeah. that fucking sells and blah, blah, blah. But they've made it so preposterous that nothing can stop him. And the littlest guy just comes back from everything. And then. We've gotten to know that as a person, as a human being, Darby Allen is the biggest fucking moron that has ever <laughs> stepped foot on this earth and drawn a breath. He's a goddamn mental case, and he ought to be put away somewhere for his own safety and those of others. He is not producible because he's a complete oh idiot. Oh, my God. Even if you tell him, <laughs> don't do this shit, you make the business look like shit, you make it phony oh as fuck, and you're going to kill yourself, and you, we're going to lose our investment in you because you ain't going to be worth a shit. All those many reasons, he just wants to do this shit because he doesn't care whether he hurts himself or not, which is the <laughs> classic textbook definition of a fucking moron. <laughs> So I cannot continue oh to support God. a guy that has 
some talent and some charisma oh my God. that refuses to use it and refuses to set any kind of example and refuses how to do this the right way or to learn how to do this the right way. And now after he's goddamn done this, he's going to come back and finish the match, by the way. Yeah. And then he's, he got sewed up and he's put out on the internet that this shouldn't interfere with him leaving next month to go climb Mount Everest. Oh. I hope you do go climb Mount Everest, you fucking brainless twat. <laughs> Here's the thing. I forgot. I, I, I forgot about that. So I didn't know if he was still trying to climb Mount Everest or not. But apparently he still is, which is fucking insanity. And I honestly don't think he should be doing that, considering he's not an experienced climber. And even experienced climbers. A lot of times they end up dying up there. Like I don't, I don't know, but it's his life. So, but Jim's over it. He said, "Fuck this guy. <laughs> Stay as far away from me as possible, so I don't have to keep telling you what a <laughs> fucking idiot you are <laughs> and what a golden opportunity that you're wasting. Oh that some God. fucking Mark billionaire <laughs> will pay you guaranteed money to go out there and jack off like a fucking moron." <laughs> Like your goddamn Danny oh. Knoxville or whatever the jackass guy's name is. Oh, you just want to get God. hit in the nuts over and over. <laughs> Fuck you and your fucking nuts, Darby. I'm a, it's <laughs> worse to waste talent and opportunity oh, when you have it God. than not to ever have it to begin with. Oh, my God, bro. This is fucking hilarious. Bro. So do you think, Brian, I've registered my complete disgust with Darby Allen as a human being for wasting goddamn things that he gets that almost nobody else ever gets in their life? Yeah, he's really good. I like him. I think he should just yeah. do what he does. <laughs> yeah, so then Sting came back, and he beat up a bunch of them. <laughs> and then he climbed the ladder. But one of the bucks caught him, and they powerbombed him through a table, but he didn't sell it. He just stood yep. up and made a comeback. But then mm -hmm. they threw him through the glass <laughs> and gave him the scorpion death drop. and got. What's making this funny is someone, if you're watching the match live, you're just having a great time. But if someone reads off what happened in each moment in this match to you, and you didn't watch it live, you would think it's the most nonsensical match of all time. Deadass. The way he's reading it is fucking killing me. It's hilarious. But I watched it and I just had fun. So it's one of those things where you tell this to a, a non-wrestling fan, they're going to look at you like, what the fuck are we, what, what are you watching? <laughs> Two count. And then one of the Bucks tried to grab the belt from Steamboat, but Steamboat chopped him, so the other one hit him with a chair, and Ricky actually sold something. Mm -hmm. And then Flair rolled into the ring and covered Sting up so that the Buckaroos couldn't beat him up anymore with the belt. And this took forever. Mm -hmm. And then they finally decided to double super kick Flair and then Steamboat. <laughs> Ah, there's more. Uh, the Buckaroos hit Sting with the belt and got a two count. They did another double super kick to him, but he didn't sell it. He made a comeback. On him. <laughs> then he, they gave him the double knee lift and he kicked out of that. Then they gave him another double knee lift and he kicked out at one. <laughs> then they gave him a double super kick. And then they tried to give him the big double team. It used to be the Meltzer driver, but now they've renamed it the Tony Khan driver. And they were going to go for that, but Darby pushed whichever one. I thought one that was the... Jimmy Jacobs, the Tony Khan driver. Uh, no, no, no. That's that's only uh, in in automotive terms. This was actually a wrestling move. But uh, Darby came back from the dead and pushed whichever buck was on the top rope off through a table. Mm -hmm. And then Sting hit the death drop on the other one and got a two count. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then Darby, who's still covered in blood and his back is bleeding everywhere in this nitwit. <laughs> I wouldn't have got anywhere near him. He goes up the top rope and hits the coffin drop where he drops his bloody mess of a back on one of the buckaroos. So there's hepatitis for the future. <laughs> hey, Darby was homeless. Don't all homeless people have hepatitis? 
Or is that something else that the homeless people are getting mad at us for throwing around? Yeah, they'll get mad at you because I'm not saying it, and of course that's not true. And well, of course it's not. But I bet Darby does. <laughs> and finally, Sting got the scorpion on whichever one of the buckaroos was in the ring at the time, and finally it was over. And Sting and Darby Allen retained the tag team title, and you'll yeah. never guess, Brian, we could, never could have seen this coming in a million years. The tag team title has been declared vacant and will be filled in a tournament on TV in March. Yep, sound about right. <sighs> so, uh, Darby Allen enrages me. <laughs> Darby <laughs> Allen makes a fire burn within my fucking bowels at the ignorance of him. <laughs> And I, I'm almost moved to travel and leave and go out in public and leave my home and travel somewhere just to tell him what a stupid idiot I think he is. But I'd probably end up getting COVID on the way. So I'll beat you with a skateboard. Oh yeah, fuck his skateboard. I would shove his skateboard up his fucking ass. Hey, cause I, I'm sorry, but I was waiting for this because I knew Jill was going to be so mad at this to get dark. As soon as I saw that spot, I was like, oh, Jim's going to lose his shit. He's going to fucking lose. He's had it. He can't take Darby no more. Darby's on his shit list. As well, right along with John Moxley and Kenny Omega. <laughs> You know, he's 145 pounds, and I know Ooh. nothing can kill him, but also he he really can't do anything effective except getting beat up. We didn't really <laughs> see him do anything except fling himself around and damage himself. Oh, it's man. not like he actually has holds and moves that he hurts people with. He just makes them tired out trying to kill him. <laughs> anyway, I, I will make other another comparison. This match, the way Sting went out, Sting got over as a major star in the wrestling business, working for the second largest promotion in the co in the country. Did Sting get over by doing any of this shit? Any of it? No, that's the thing. Since Sting has come back, and again, he's an older guy, and I guess he had to hide a lot of the what he couldn't do through mm -hmm. these matches, but these are kind of the matches we saw him work here and nowhere before here. Yeah. Ever. You never said, oh, Sting, guy had that fucking bloodbath, or Sting. Well, I mean, there were a few wild there matches, matches, him and Abdul, him and Cactus blood. Jack, yeah. Yes, I'm saying, yeah, I always have matches with blood, but there weren't any bloodbaths, like Sting was noted for having bloodbaths, or Sting was noted for street fights, or Sting was noted for fucking taking high bumps off of fucking ladders through furniture. Is there an example of Sting going through a table before he joined AEW? Maybe in TNA, yeah, with the Dudleys around, probably. Mm -hmm. But the point is, <laughs> Flair made Sting a star in the same building 35 years ago in a 45-minute match that was twice as long as this one and seemed like it was a third of as long, and they didn't even use a chair, did they? No. No. <laughs> Eddie Haskell was sitting in the chair. Yes, and one of the penthouse pets. I'm sure somebody was sniffing that chair later on. Ay, yo. Jason Hervey. But yes, you do have to have smoke and mirrors when you've got a 65-year-old legend that you're trying to protect and make look good in a match. That's why you have great workers that can take bumps for him and put him in position for things and do everything for him, mm -hmm. not when you... <clears throat> resort to furniture and glass and fucking chaos of this man phoniness of this magnitude then you've just you've killed everything including is something could have gone wrong and he could have fucking broke his neck with all this shit mm -hmm. and it's not like either one of the buckaroos are strong enough to move a grown man around and save him if his trajectory is off so Again, before we get into the post-match, they have this match to honor and close the career of a guy who got over by doing everything except anything that happened in this fucking match. <laughs> well, so then... Oh, boy. He's got the opportunity now to thank everybody, right? Oh, here we go. 
Oh, they're boy. chanting, thank you, thank you. And they, they played the music and let celebration go long enough for Sting to get some breath. Mm-hmm. And Darby, once again, is still out there. He sliced the ribbons and taped up everywhere. But Sting starts his speech. And he starts with thanking the fans in Greensboro. You've always been here since the start to blah, 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 you know, in this same building and everything. And then he's starting to move on to the people that have supported him around the world. And just then, Darby leans over and whispers in his ear. And Sting actually says on the microphone, Darby's giving me cues. (laughs) And then the copyright notice pops up and they go to black. Yep. They ran over time on the pay-per-view. They cut Sting's retirement speech <laughs> off the pay-per-view. We didn't say, did he hug Ric Flair? We don't know. Is Flair still breathing? Yep. And I know they uploaded it on YouTube, but it's it, uh, that's a moment. They, poor time management. You don't, I shouldn't have to go to YouTube to essentially check out what Sting said at the end of that match. That's my only thing. I know it's on YouTube, but that, no. If you're watching it live, that, that should have been a, a moment to watch live. They definitely, they got to, I don't know what they got to do, but they got to work on their time management because that was not good. Breathing, we don't know. Where's Steamboat? What happened to him? What did Sting have to say? How did he end it with farewell? Did he say it's showtime for the last time? We don't know what he said because it wasn't on the air. Nope. You had to be in the building to see it. It was like one of Dick the Bruiser's old TV shows. They'd get you hooked and then say, well, folks, should have been here live. We're out of time. Yeah. We that don't is, know what that is fuck. the ultimate AEW goodbye, isn't yeah. it? They go off the air because they run over during your retirement speech. We didn't. If it had been the <laughs> WWE, we would have seen the fucking pyro go off and everybody standing and applauding as the triumphant hero went up and then we'd have seen the highlight video Mm -hmm. of everything that happened in the match and the fucking fade out on his face with the fans chanting we've still got it or whatever thank you Sting." instead we got copyright 2024 AEW wrestling and black Oh man! And this time you can't blame fans for not setting their DVR. Shut the tap! That's. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Buy the pay per view after the pay per view? You hear? Let me just. I'll get a fifty dollar insurance policy. Let me get the goddamn, the best of fucking stand up from fucking Josephus, just in case the real pay per view that I bought runs over. Mm-hmm. Well, that was AEW Revolution. Tony Khan tweeted this out this morning, Jim. Last night at AEW Revolution, Sting completed the greatest comeback in sports history. Sting's three-year run in AEW from ages 61 to 64, 30 matches, 30-0 record. 29-0 in AEW, 1-0 in Noah for the great (laughs) Muda send-off, retired as AEW World Tag Team Champion in the best last match ever. Uh, oh, my that. God. I don't know about the best last oh match ever. Boy. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That was great, bro. I just really wanted to see what Jim Cornette had to say about Darby. Do I agree? Not necessarily. Me, personally, I enjoyed it. I had fun with this match. It made absolute no sense, but I had fun. But at the same time, seeing or hearing Jim Cornette profess his hatred for Darby Allen now is fucking fantastic and I love it comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy his uh Sting's last match even though it was just chaotic overbooked nonsense did you guys have a good time and is Jim Cornette's hatred for Darby Allen justified let me know down below but I appreciate all the love support road to 150k and I'm still here in speedy each of the rest of the champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace <laughs>